With that in mind, that word, liberation, what comes to mind when you hear that? Liberation, freedom, it's to be yourself and totally to live in the now. To live in the now, to be free of the stories in your head. We are storytelling people. Every society tells stories. Every person tells themselves stories. So here's a nice story. Yeah. I am John Turk. I'm 75 <laughs> years old. I have a wife. I live in the mountains. I ride my mountain bike. That's a nice story. But that's not now. That's not the presence. Mm, right. So liberation is to free myself from that story. It doesn't matter. What matters is what's happening right now. My internal contentment, my moment, my well-being, my love, my presence. So the greatest freedom is to be free of the stories I spin in my own head and the stories that people spin around me. Do you believe in mind continuation and somehow surviving physical death and moving on and, and continuing the journey of the storytelling? Okay, let's look at my father. My father's wisdom lives inside me. His storytelling, his wisdom, his love got carried into me. I don't personally worry about where what's going to happen to me after I die, but I do believe that our imprint on the world moves beyond beyond our lives and I hope that when I die that what I say and the love I give will continue to make the world hopefully I mean this is a big way to say it I'll make the whole world hopefully a little bit of a better place so you wrote the book the raven's gift a scientist a shaman and their remarkable journey through the siberian wilderness what was the main inspiration and intention of writing your book john well i started this journey i was paddling a kayak from Japan to Alaska, 3,000 miles across the most tempestuous, one of the most tempestuous oceans in the world. Yeah. I started that journey as a professional adventurer. This is what I did for a living. I was sponsored by big companies. I advertised their product. I wrote books and gave talks about it. And then halfway along the journey, I met Mulanath, this 94-year-old shaman that we talked about previously. And she awakened me to a new reality. And at that moment, when I saw the clarity of what she was saying and wanted to learn more, I stopped being a professional adventurer and all my sponsors dropped me like a hot potato. They were going, you're talking about shamanism. We don't want to talk about shamanism. We want to talk about hardcore, boom, tough guy reality. And if you're going to spend five years in Siberia with this woman, you're out of here. You lost your job. You're fired. Goodbye. But the wisdom and the beauty and the peace and the well-being and the love that I learned from Mulanat and from all the Koryak people, the whole concept of the shame and the hunter and the tundra, the unity of everything, it was like, fine, I've changed. I'm a different person. I've become, I've opened myself up to a different reality. Fine, if my whole life is changing from that, that's wonderful. But now it becomes my mission to try to be a spokesperson for what Mulanat was trying to tell me. And she told me straight out, she said she wanted me to take her message to the Western world. She asked me to do that. Right. And that's what I've been doing. So you sent me an email and you wrote something truly beautiful. You say, Mother Nature talks to all of us all the time. Her voice is loud and clear, but often muffled by all the noise around us. But if we spend time in the forest, deserts, mountains, oceans, and so on, we can hear her. So you said our six months in the desert was both soulful and transformational. 
So my question is, what is it about nature that has this transformative power? Perhaps it's that nature has no stories. Nature doesn't manipulate you. Yes, I know that nature can cause an avalanche that will wash you down a mountain and break your pelvis. Nature can cause a rainstorm that will rain on your parade or that will make your head get wet. I know all of that, I've been there. But that's not a story, that's a now, that's a nowness. And we are so consumed by our stories, by other people, by ourselves, when we're in nature, we suddenly realize that there is no story. There is just the presence. And that's why nature is transformative. If you continually slip into your stories, oh darn, I'm into this story again. If you go out into nature, nature will sponge that story away. And that's what's so transformative about nature.